There's me pet cat just lounging around. Okay, so this video is uh, a request from Ira from www.trs80.com about what to do when you get an old TRS-80 that hasn't been used for years or decades. Um, the preparations and checks you should do before putting it into active service again. This one's a Model 3. I bought recently on eBay. It's in quite nice condition. Um, though I did found as, find as I was unpacking it that there's something rattling around inside it and we want to investigate that before we um, plug it in and uh, just in case it's shorting out something and causing problems. Uh, this is a 48k uh, machine. You can just read that on the memory emblem there. Dual disk drives. Uh, it's not a bad machine. Um, I'll also show you some of the other uh, things we do that I do uh, in preparing one of these machines for sale. So first thing to do is to open up the old gal. Now first screw on these is on the back here. So let's just get that one out. Right, once you've got that out, on these computers there's 10 screws underneath them. Hey, you could probably hear stuff rattling around in there. I wonder what we're going to find. So I'll just take all these screws out. The electric driver is good for um, for most of them. Though there's two sunken screws um, that I'll show you in a moment that you need a regular screwdriver to, to get to. If your computer has never been opened you'll find this sticker here has uh, a screw underneath it. You've just got to bust through it. Okay, there's normally another screw there which I haven't put in. Okay, and so we've got two sunken screws, one in there and one in there. So we'll just get those guys out. You've noticed that I've left this computer unplugged. Haven't plugged it in at all. Don't want it to short or set off the trip switches in my house. So. Okay. So that's all the screws out, undone. Those two sunken ones will fall out as I lift the computer up. It's going to be hard to open with uh, one hand. So I'm going to have to put the camera down in a moment while I lift the top off. The trick to lifting the top off a TRS-80 like this is to look through this hole here at the picture tube at the CRT neck as you lift it up, make sure it doesn't catch on anything. So I'm just going to put down the camera for a minute and um, take the top off this beast. Okay, lids off. First thing I want to do is find the source of that noise of rattling around and what do you know there's some coins in here I don't know why people deposit money into their TRS 80s but well there's a dime and another one what do we got oh a quarter yeah. that looks like about about it for loose stuff in here okay so, now that we've got those out, we can inspect the power supply. Now, those of you that know a lot about these machines can see that that's actually a Model 4 65, 65 watt power supply. And Model 3's typically had dual uh, 35 watt power supplies. So what that makes this is a very late Model 3. 
just when they were about to start Model 4 production, they started putting, well, the drive towers are white, like they are out of a Model 4, and the power supply is out of a Model 4. The motherboard and everything else is plain Model 3 stuff. And what I'm going to do shortly is remove this power supply and change these three filter caps here for nice new ones because they will eventually burn out and smoke and cause problems so just doing that preemptively uh, everything else looks pretty much in place on this computer I'm not seeing any real problems so I think we've got all the rattling stuff out I'm just going to plug it in and see what it does this is just for the purpose of the video to plug it in because uh, normally I would pull the power supply out first and um, recap it but we just want to see what this thing does uh, when it's powered up all right okay all looks good let's give it some volts I'm going to start it with the um, okay that's a good start disk drive lights up and then stops and looking at the back of the CRT very hard to see on this camera but the tube is lit up it's got a nice little orange glow to it so we've got some power to the CRT we'll hold the brake key down and press reset We'll boot it up into Cassette Basic, and you can see on the screen there, CAS, CAS. So, this is a pretty good start for one of these. Enter twice, gets you into Cassette Basic. And then the first check we want to do is to see if the disk drive will access from the system. And in order to do that, we type out. 244 comma 1 that's OUT 244 comma 1 when I press enter the disk drive will spin up momentarily and then stop again that's our test that motherboard disk controller and floppy drive uh, motherboard disk controller and floppy drive are all communicating properly with each other the next thing I do before proceeding with a disc in it is to test the keyboard and see if there's any dead keys. So let's have a go at typing some. Red X C C C C C. C is not working. V B N. Okay, so we know I've already found some dead keys. So we know we're going to have to repair those keys so in the next bit of this video I'm going to remove the keyboard and the power supply and get them ready for work to be done on them then we'll re re return them um, to the computer and um, continue with testing the machine soon we'll also try and boot a floppy disk on it so due to the magic of video editing you'll now see me um, remove the parts from the computer, put them on my desk and fix them. Okay, so this is the power supply removed from the Model 3. It's actually a Model 4 power supply, but uh, some of the last Model 3s had Model 4 power supplies in them. The components I replace are this one, this one, and this one. They are um, C2, C1, and C13. They um, are a paper capacitor for filtering the AC line and if um, if they uh, give problems well, eventually they will um, smoke out and um, and uh, short out or just make uh, some smoke come out of your computer so I always replace them so the way we do that is to just remove the part with a hot soldering iron I'll do now. OK. 
okay so there it is there and we've got a replacement part to put in here a better design which um, will not give a problem so in order to do that we'll just clean these uh, socket these holes here for the part put in put our new part in like so and resolder or if you're in America resoldering So once that's in, we can then cut off the excess legs. And we go on and do that with the uh, other two capacitors there. While I'm at it, what I also do is resolder this connector here and this connector here. They're marked as TB1 and TB2. That's because these uh, tend to um, have dry uh, cracked solder joints there um, give strange anomalies on the video display or may cause your system not to run so that's what I do to a to a power supply okay on a keyboard such as this one that we tested um, in the earlier part of the video we know that the shift key and the C key are both giving problems so I'll show you how we deal with um, with those so the first thing we do is remove the key cap which just comes off like that and we want to get this key switch out so in order to do that we will unsolder the key okay so we'll unsolder these four connections here one's already busted because this is a beaten up old keyboard so we'll just remove the solder on these the pins are loose and to get this key switch out we have to push in the two tabs and sort of pull up on the key switch so um, the best way I've found is to just do it like that once the key switch is out it can then be taken apart which is just to open the side tabs take out the plunger and what we're going to be trying to do is cleaning in here on this one and cleaning that black pad so what I use is just a cotton tip and some methylated spirits very lightly what we do is give that a very hard clean in there push hard on that there's metal contact contacts so give that a clean on this plunger here give it a light clean you can see we've got some black oxide coming off onto the onto the cotton tip. We then um, go back in there with the dry end of the cotton tip and dry it out. Make sure it's nice and shiny. Dry that one out as well. And simply put it all back together now what I'll do is um, test this switch make sure it reads under about 100 ohms resistance when the keys pressed if it reads under about 100 ohms it's ready to put back in the um, in the keyboard um, 
So once it's back in the keyboard, we can put it back in the computer and test it out, which I'll do in the next part of the video. Okay, while the computer's in pieces, it's also a good idea to check over its floppy drives. Uh, you just remove them from the um, computer, from the four uh, bolts on the side. First thing we check is that drive motor turns around without too much friction and that there's a reasonable amount of tension on that rubber, rubber band. So that looks okay. And the other thing I check is that the head moves back and forth smoothly, which on these tanned on disk drives, you just do that. It wants a little bit of resistance, but not too much. If it's got too much resistance, um, uh, you um, probably will give you read-write errors when it's stepping. If it doesn't move at all, uh, chances are the drive is junk, and you're going to have to throw it out to... Uh, and replace it with another one. So the way to uh, then check the carriage mechanism which is underneath this circuit board is we have to lift this board out the way. It's held down by two plastic pegs there and there. Uh, you push them up from underneath so that they're exposed at the top and then um, we'll just uh, Use some pliers to pull out the pegs. There's one, and that's the other. We'll put them aside because we'll need them in a moment. Disconnect this connector here, which is for the read write head. Slip the board back and lift it up. Right, so now we've got access to the insides of the disk drive. First thing I check is the head itself, that white bit with the line going through it. Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit more. Yeah, it's going to be hard to focus. Anyway, that's the read write head in there. If there's any sign of oxide or blackness on that, it's too dirty to use, so it needs to be cleaned. Uh, with a cotton tip and some alcohol like I uh, showed before with the keyboard. On the other side, so under under this thing here, is a felt pad. Now, that's going to be even harder to, to show on this thing. But anyway, there's a felt pad under here which presses the disc against the, um, the read-write head. If the felt pad is missing, the drive will never work because um, the pads needed to, to maintain the contact of the disc with the, the drive head. So they're the first things to check, that the head's not dirty and that the pad is in place. The last thing I do is lubricate these rails here. Uh, so we want to do this rail here and on the other side that rail there. Even if you've got a good working drive, and as you uh, as it's working, you hear squeak, squeak. As it's reading and writing, you could uh, would be a good idea to um, to lubricate the rails. So the way I do that is to use some multi-purpose oil, or sewing machine oil, I think they call it. We'll just um, put a little bit of it in here, like so and grab a cotton tip um, soak it properly and then all I do is run it back and forth over these rails like so I'll give it a bit more and this one as well Make sure those rails are nice and lubricated and move it back and forth, feel it freeing up a little bit and that's pretty much good to go. So clean disc head, felt tip, lubricated rails and underneath drive belt that is um, 
in good condition. Don't touch your drive belt after you've just been lubricating the rails. Chances are you'll put um, some oil onto the belt and make it slip and cause all sorts of errors which are hard to track down. So what I'll do is I'll put that disk drive back together and put the keyboard and power supply and everything back in the computer and we'll fire it up and see how our uh, restoration has gone. Okay, so we're nearly done on this Model 3. I've um, recapped and reinstalled the power supply, reinstalled the keyboard which has um, been repaired, the disk drives have been cleaned and, um, and uh, lubricated and reinstalled. So all we've got to do now is put the lid on it, see if uh, all my work has been worth it. So I'll just put this camera on the tripod here. Okay. So we'll fire the old girl up. Make it load into cassette basic. So if you recall from before the C key didn't work, the C key is fixed and the um, left shift key didn't work. Typing lots of symbols there, so that's good. Let's put a boot disk in and see how our disk drives are going. Perfect. Yep. So we've got now a perfect working Model 3 TRS-80 bought on eBay, repaired um, and fixed, tested, uh, ready to go back into service. Uh, so that's all the stuff that I do on a machine as a minimum before getting it ready to, uh, to start working with and I suggest if you're buying systems from thrift shops or eBay or Craigslist do all those things before you start using them and you'll have a uh, you'll have a good reliable machine um, so yeah I hope you enjoyed that video and um, thanks for watching